Good afternoon. I became a teacher because I wanted to get rich. <laughs> okay, so the financial part of that didn't work out so well, but I have been enriched in many other ways. When I became an avid teacher, I had been teaching for 23 years, had traveled many journeys and fought many battles. I didn't realize, however, that like Clint Eastwood, my avid journey would bring the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's start with the ugly. Ugly was the first two months in my avid elective class. I began as an experienced, confident teacher. I attended Summer Institute and I was equipped with my IMAP and avid libraries. I was not only armed for battle, I was prepared to win the war. And then my 30 new avid students walked through the door. You want me to carry that to all my classes, they asked of the binder. Two hours of homework every night? For the first months, I struggled to find my rhythm. AVID was not my usual English class, and I felt like a first-year teacher. So we worked together. They set goals for the first quarter. I set mine and shared. They wrote in their planner. I wrote in mine and shared. They had questions about assignments in their toughest classes. I called their teachers and shared. Slowly, we made progress. Still, I can't imagine how ugly that first year might have been if we'd been alone. Fortunately, my AVID site team supported and connected with many of my AVID students. Javier, an angry young man who had lost his grandfather the year before, did not continue in AVID because of my influence. He stayed because of his relationship with Jeff Friend and Eric Filippi, two invaluable site team members. They were his mentors, and they directed him when negative forces tempted. Eventually, Javier and I connected. Our tenuous relationship slowly forged to one of mutual understanding. Javier never lied to me, although there were times I wished for less honesty. But he trusted me at first simply because Jeff and Eric trusted me. By the end of the first year, my AVID elective class was no longer ugly, and we were moving steadily ahead. Bad were the gatekeepers, those teachers who threw obstacles in the path of our AVID students, certain of their failure. This battle was as tough as it was heartbreaking. How could any teacher want a child to fail? Teachers told my AVID students that they would never pass their class because they simply didn't have the necessary foundation of knowledge. Others told them I was wrong to put them in classes where they didn't belong and to expect so much from them. And my favorite question from the gatekeepers, you want me to water down my curriculum for AVID? Very bad. But together, AVID students and the AVID site team persevered and conquered. Today, we've had eight Dell Scholars graduate from our high school. We've had a 300% growth in our AP program, primarily due to the AVID enrollment that will reach 271 next year. And the gatekeepers, they're still there. But most have converted and are AVID believers now. And the few who do not believe well, their murmurs are weak compared to our shouts of success. Bad are also the neighborhoods our students leave each morning and return to each evening. Like many students across the nation, ours come from poverty and crime. Many work late evenings to help support families, or they must babysit while parents work the evening shift. Many of their childhood friends are now gang members. We offer our AVID students a safe place for eight hours a day, a haven that challenges them academically and seeks to build a new peer support group. Still, they go home at night. Brenda's sophomore year, she joined a gang and her grades dropped. The next months were agonizing as the AVID team watched her struggle to live in two different worlds. It took a bullet and an unplanned pregnancy to change her path. 
During her junior year, her grade point average soared to 4.0, and her senior year she was awarded the Dell Scholarship. Today, she is a junior in college deciding if she wants to major in law or education. A bullet remains near her heart to remind her of bad choices and bad friends. When avid elective teacher Megan Pipkin called for advice about one of her students, who was making the same bad choices that Brenda did, Brenda was there to offer guidance and support. Finally, the good, which very fortunately outweighs both the bad and the ugly. Without a doubt, good is the courage of our avid students. Courage to walk into a classroom filled with strangers, none of whom looks like them, and carve a place that is theirs. Courage to face those who expect failure and persevere until they are successful. Courage to be a pioneer in their family and pursue their college dream. Courage to face down friends who are negative and forge new positive friendships. I am inspired by their bravery in facing fears. I have learned much of valor and heroism from my AVID students. Good is also the AVID site team. Before AVID, I was the teacher who went to my classroom, closed the door, and did my best with my students. AVID has opened that door. The AVID elective teachers collaborate to solve the many issues we face, as well as those obstacles our students must overcome. We cry and we celebrate together. This past spring, we were honored to host an AVID awareness at our high school. During a panel discussion, one person asked if being an AVID teacher was ever a burden. Andrea Brandt, a first-year AVID teacher, elbowed her way to the front. She told the group that when she started, she wasn't sure she could be a good AVID teacher. She motioned her hand to indicate the rest of us. These teachers help me every day, she said. They are my family. How has AVID changed me as a teacher? Like Andrea, I have found a family of support at school. From those in the beginning, Jeff and Eric, Reagan, who was once my intern <clears throat> and now an important colleague, Denise, who shares my vision, and Lila, who is always by my side, to the new teachers who join us every year. I no longer teach a subject. I guide students on a journey of lifelong learning. I have discovered the riches of being a teacher. And perhaps the most important change is a realization that Clint Eastwood's character, the lone gunman, never experienced. On this journey, fighting the ugly and the bad, the good, the best, is quite simply, I am not alone. Thank you.